Welcome back. Well, it was 48 years ago just this past week that mankind first landed on the moon when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were the first astronauts to step on the battered surface. They got there on July 20th, 1969 via the lunar module that was built right here on Long Island by an incredible engineering crew at Grumman who worked day and night on it for a decade. And joining us now are two of the workers who made the seemingly impossible possible. They are Ross Bracco, lunar module structural design engineer, and Al Contessa, who worked on the lunar module's thermal insulation. He's an expert at that, among many other things. And welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. So 48 years ago, wow, what were your thoughts when we recently observed the anniversary? Did you go back to that day? Relived it a bit, uh, and uh, going to the cradle of aviation where I volunteer makes me relive the 60s uh, every time I'm there. Because the lunar module that first landed on the moon with the astronauts is on display at the Cradle of Aviation Museum in Garden City, isn't that right? That's, That's correct. That is lunar module number 13 would have been the next one to go to the moon oh, had the program not been canceled. But it's a genuine, real lunar module. So it's an example of the, the actual lunar module. And there you see it right there. Is this picture of it over at uh, the museum? I that's, believe it that's is. That's at the yeah, museum, that's right? That's, that's the LEM number 13 vehicle. This it's, is a structural demonstrator in the simulation of the clean room that we had at Grumman. Well, I'll tell you, it looks like it could take off right now and head there. I mean, it's such a piece of work. I mean, what, do you marvel at it, you guys, when you think, wow, I did that? Al, how do you feel when you look at that? Well, it uh, turns out it was the most important thing I ever did in a, you know, as, as a job, for sure. And it's, uh, you know, now it's 48 years later, we're still talking about it. Yeah, you probably feel that way too, right, Ross? It was a big part of our life. We put a lot of hours in. And being an engineer, uh, I put the hours in very willingly but I didn't get paid overtime. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, I think we could all probably find some periods, but you, I think you guys are in a different category because you actually built a vehicle that took people to the moon, which before was the stuff of science fiction. People don't realize now we take this for granted looking at movies, right? And yes. we have a space station, but this was not a sure thing. Uh, President Kennedy said we're going to land on the moon before the end of this decade. You guys were working over there Grumman in the early 60s, right? What did you think when you heard that? Well, we figured he's behind us. And they would keep the money flowing uh, for building the item. But then you only made it by a few months, so it was a tight schedule, Correct. right, Al? Yeah. Well, yeah, because they had delays because of the Apollo 1 fire that set the program back. So there were things that, uh, you know, it was just, it was close. Well, now, here you have some things here. The first start with this photo. Hold this up. This shows you back <laughs> working on the module, right? This is working on lunar module number six that was on Apollo 12 at Cape Kennedy. Yeah, we're going to get a close-up of it here. And if you, if you squint, folks, trust us on us. <laughs> the, in the far right corner, that's you, right, Al? Leaning against a pole, we were waiting for a deployment of the landing gear that we just insulated so they could test it to see if it worked. We did the same job on the Apollo 11 rocket, but you couldn't open the gear up on top of the rocket, so we had to do this. So, uh, Ross, what was, yeah, let, we're going to come back to your other displays in a minute. I want you to get, show us an example of your insulation. But before we do that, Ross, what were the challenges with building this module? What did you have to overcome? What seemed like was impossible? First, we had to learn about the environment, so we spent probably close to a year just doing research about it. Grumman got us connected with uh, every library in the world. We could get uh, material overnight to do our research. Yeah, you had to get uh, material shipped to you overnight. Wasn't like your phone where you could now uh, you Google didn't, didn't whatever you wanted to know that. about something. And when we designed the LEM, we used a slide rule. I don't know if anybody knows what a slide rule is. Yeah, they use there them anymore, no, right? There were no calculators around except for the large mainframes. Well, and I know the weight was a big issue because you, right? Right. It cost us uh, about between three and five pounds <laughs> of fuel for every pound of weight on the vehicle. So we had to make it as light as possible. Because you don't want to run out of fuel. And they were even cutting things like that pretty tight. And another issue was the insulation, right? Because you, this thing, you don't want it burning up in the atmosphere. It also has to be able to take the harsh environment of the moon. Uh, you have some examples of some of the stuff you used there. Talk about yeah. the insulation challenge, well, Al. The insulation uh, was critical. It relates to what you were saying. It had to be light, strong, and do the job. What is that? This is uh, it's called Kapton now. We called it aluminized polymide. And, and the, on the inside is mylar. Just think of those balloons that kids get. Uh, so it's for like almost man-made. Oh, so it's like the balloons it's you a, have yeah, now. It's a resin coated with uh, 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 aluminum. But yet this very thin insulation is all that's really protecting them? Uh, it was for 
uh, temperature control, and then on the ex and, and then there was aluminum skins on top of the ascent stage. And you have another one below and then that. On the descent stage, the exterior skins were uh, this two mil material. This is a five mil material, and this is a clear uh, five mil material. So these acted as uh, micrometeor. Or a shield. So if there was any little small meteors that were floating wow. around in space, it would stop it. So, it, but it had to be light, like you said. Light to not add weight, and yet have incredible tensile strength to be right. able to handle any collision. Incredible, you'd find these are kinds of challenges that you guys successfully overcame. And yet, what you're living here on Long Island, you're a couple of regular guys on Long Island, right? Where were you living Hopefully. at the time? Uh, I live in Hop Hog, and I was in in Hop Hog at the time. So now your family must be thrilled by this. Do you still have to, do you ever get tired of re, uh, recanting all the glories of these stories? Anytime they ask about it, I'm willing, willing to talk. For a the, lot? Oh, sorry. The major structure of the LEM, one of the things I like to tell people, is a billet of aluminum that was ordered because we had to make as few parts as possible f to prevent leakage. Uh, because the guy's lives are, were at hand. Well, you know what? And it worked. And it's still the stuff of legend. Uh, Ross Bracco and Al Contessa made on Long Island. The story of the lunar module, the first to set foot on the moon. Thank you very much. You can see it at the Cradle of Aviation Museum. And these gentlemen, because uh, they assist folks there over in Garden City. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.